Hi, my name is Scott Lindsay. Today we're going to go through getting started with Productivity Plus. One of the first things that we need to do is get ourselves a RenMF file that's been configured for our machine. A RenMF file is the Productivity Plus probing version of a post processor. The RenMF file creates the macro codes that we need to output to our machine to do the measurement and the logic routines. Let's create our first probing routine. Let's pick our default probe. Make sure that you've got a tool number in here and a tool offset that, that is corresponds with where your tool probe is in the machine. Okay, okay. Now, the first one we wanna do is we wanna set our G54Z. So we're gonna probe a point. We're gonna come out here and grab our point that we have on our part. We're going to press enter and it's going to put that information in here into our, our approach point. We're going to call it measure point. If we want to make sure that we give these things good names, keeping these labeled will keep you keep everything straight later on when we're doing this stuff. Okay. For this next one, I've opened up a part that I've programmed and I'm going to walk through what we did on this one. We are going to, machine a feature, check if it's good or bad, and rework it if it's small, and decide if it's scrap if it's too big. So to start this, we need to come up here and we need to do our probe, and we need to create these labels to where the toolpath, where, where we wanna jump around in our program to. So we need three of them. We need one to do if, it's, if we wanna rework it. So we just create a label that's called rework. And we create another label that tells it the if statement, where to go if it's good, and where to go if it's scrap, and where to you know kick it down to the end of the program and hit our M30. So we need to be able to, between our roughing toolpath and our finishing toolpath, we need to be able to have that label stuffed in here. So we have to do a little bit of uh, breaking up of some toolpaths so that we can interject these uh, probe labels in between. Because if we just had a tool, one finish, one a roughing toolpath, and it finished at the same time, we wouldn't be able to get in between there to. So we don't want to remachine our roughing and just cut air. You know that would be a waste. So we need to break these up so that we can uh, stick our label in here. So on our probe measure, we're going to create our probing toolpath up here, and inside here we're we're going to inspect the circle. We went out there and we picked the, the feature on our part and it gave us the dimensions where it's at. We're gonna measure the inside. We're gonna do four point measure. And then I called it measure 10 mil hole, okay? After we've done that, we're gonna create our logic. We uh, come up here and we create the if then statement. It's gonna generate this stuff here and we're gonna condition if the hole. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna click this guy. Condition one, hole diameter whole 10 mil diameter. So it's looking at the diameter is less than the, the actual measurement, the size. If I click in here and I say a uh, whole diameter and I click on it and I say get nominal value, it will plug in the diameter that of the, of the feature that I picked out on my screen. And then I can just do minus 5,000 or plus 5,000 here, whatever I need. So that's my, my, my question. And then if that statement is true or false, if it's true, do this. I'm gonna update, so I did an NC update. I'm gonna check the tool diameter. I'm gonna update the tool diameter of tool two from the feature of the hole. And I'm gonna update my wear offset. After I've updated my tool diameter, I'm going to jump to go to label rework, which is going to hop up here into my program and start back here. If it's false, then it's going to ask another question. So we're looking at the whole diameter again, if it's less than or equal to, and then I've gone to the other side of my tolerance. So it's the whole size plus five thou. So now if this statement is true, then I'm going to update my tool diameter just like I did before. And I'm going to jump to this label, keep going 10 mil hole. So it hops down to this line of code right here in my program. 
If that is also false, then here we're gonna. Every, this is the catch-all, the else at the end. If it doesn't, if it's not, an, if it's not small and reworkable, and if it's not intolerance, then it's got to be scrap. And we're gonna skip down to this label, stop machining, which kicks us all the way to the end of our program down here. So after we've built our toolpath and all of our stuff, we're gonna hit G1. And we're gonna come out here. And we're going to post our code and we're going to get this probing tool uh, post set here now this is the renmf file that i talked about earlier is in play here and we hit process and we're looking for all it's it's created every one of these operations gets ran and it initializes and decides and builds this succeeded we're looking for anything that's failing here if we have a fail then we have something wrong with our logic. So if we look all the way to the bottom, we want to see succeeded at the end. And when we hit done, then it's going to come out here and post out our code into our into our machine. And we can look through here and we can see this is where we're setting our work offset. And we're running our toolpath. And then we have our, our rough there's a, where we're roughing it. So this was our facing tool path. Right here is where, so here's where we're finishing it. So this is where our rework starts. And it has the logic that hops and skips up in here for N1. Runs our finishing tool path, checks our part, and does some go-to labels. And down here at the bottom is our scrap label. So you can see how it hops around in the program and, and creates our stuff. I hope this was helpful and informative and please give us a call if you have any questions so that we can help you out and have a good day.